Hi again, Ray here. So children are counting long before it has any meaning for them, before they realize that the numbers represent something. Because of rote memorization, children often can recite a sequence of numbers before the age of three. One-to-one -one correspondence, attaching a number to each object counted, comes much later and must be modeled. Preschoolers, for example, can mark objects as they count them, but they have trouble keeping track of what they have and haven't counted. Kindergartners can usually count at least five objects accurately, eventually learning to count six or more items by touching each item as they count. According to Charles Worth and Lind, authors of Math and Science for Young Children, one-to-one -one correspondence is the most fundamental component of the concept of number. In this video, we'll explore rote counting and reinforcing the sequence of numbers before moving on to counting a whole lot of things, including steps taken and bubbles popped, all of which promote understanding of one-to-one -one correspondence. One of my favorite counting activities is Blast Off, which involves counting backward. I first used this activity with a group of toddlers when I wanted them to go from a sitting activity to a standing one. It was so much more fun to count backward from 10 with as much drama as I could muster, ending with a command to blast off, than it was to simply ask them to stand up. All you have to do is invite the children to squat low, pretending to be spaceships on their launching pads, and let the countdown begin. Because this game involves moving from low to high positions, in addition to counting, it also provides experience with those quantitative concepts. Matching numbers to body parts means the children won't have to count any higher than 10. Just ask the children to discover and point out the body parts they have two of, <laughs> like eyes, ears, hands, feet, knees, elbows, and eyebrows. How many body parts can they name? Which parts of the face come only in ones? Possible answers, of course, include the mouth, nose, forehead, and chin. Finally, how many fingers do they have? You can uncurl them one at a time from closed fists, counting with the children so they get the idea. Once they've got it, ask if there's anything else they have 10 of. For a musical activity, invite the children to stand side by side in line. You then point to one child at a time and sing these words to the tune of bumping up and down in my little red wagon. When you point to each child, she or he steps forward from the line. Sing as slowly as you need to. One little, two little, three little children, four little, five little, six little children, seven little, eight little, nine little children, now have left the line. Continue like this until you've counted all the children. The little ones love to play choo-choo train games. When they play this version, they reinforce counting skills. Begin by asking the children to stand scattered around the room. Then explain that you're going to make a train. Tell the children that you'll be the engine and that you'll pick up one car, that's them, at a time. Begin moving around the room as each child hooks on by placing hands on the hips of the last person on the train. Call out the appropriate number. When the first child hooks on, call out one and so on. Once the, child, the train is complete, invite the children to tell you how many cars the train has. Move around the room for a while and then begin dropping off cars one at a time. Once again, calling out the corresponding numbers. An activity called Step Forward encourages the children to first recognize a number and then to count that number of steps. You'll need to have the numbers 1 to 10 written on individual cards and the children lined up side by side at one end of the room. Then stand facing the children at the opposite end of the room and hold up one of the cards for them to see. It's best to start with low numbers. The children then take that number of steps toward you counting aloud as they walk. Later, to give the children a chance to practice other locomotive skills, you can replace the steps with jumps, gallops, hops, or leaps, whatever they're capable of doing. Not surprisingly, counting begins to go from rote memorization to an understanding of one-to-one -one correspondence when the children have something fun to count. Once again, have them line up side by side at the end of the room, then invite them to see how many steps it takes to get to the other side. Encourage them to count aloud as they go, but quietly so they don't interfere with the other children's counting. You can use this activity anywhere, counting the number of steps it takes to cross the playground, to circle the room, or to move down the hall and out the door. That last one is a great transition activity. And speaking of giving something, you know, fun to count to the children, how about bubbles? 
For this activity, you'll need a bottle of bubble solution with a wand. Then, blow bubbles for the children to chase and pop. Each time a child pops one, he counts it, with each child increasing the previous number by one. For example, if Keisha pops the first bubble, she calls out one. If Marco pops the second bubble, he calls out two. The rule is that no child is allowed to pop two bubbles in a row. When the children reach numbers that are too high for them to count, then you can help them. There are lots more activities for jumping and one-to-one -one correspondence in my book, Jump Into Math, but let, let me recommend one more here, a treasure hunt. Before you begin, you'll have to hide several items with a unifying theme throughout the room. For example, stuffed animals or plastic farm animals or maybe plastic eggs. You'll also have to give each child a basket, a tote bag, or plastic shopping bag. Then, tell the children what you've hidden and let them go in search of them. When a predetermined amount of time has passed, say, you know, four or five minutes, bring the children back to the center of the room where they empty the contents of their bags and count their own items. You can then put all the items together and invite the children to count them as a whole. To get the children out into the fresh air and sunshine and make this a science experience too, hold your, tre your treasure hunt outdoors with natural materials. For example, invite the children to find as many rocks or fallen leaves as they can. I'd love to hear how these activities work for you. You can let me know by leaving a comment and please do subscribe if you haven't already. Once again, thanks for watching.